Hey brothers and sisters, Matt Hatton here. So we have another uh, video in the Knights of Avalon series. Uh, we're going to take a close look at Lady of the Lake. Uh, but real quick before we get into it, um, I was going to wear uh, this nice uh, Black Knight helmet uh, through all these videos uh, as far as content for a Knights of Avalon event. Uh, but you cannot breathe in that helmet and... Um, and I think it was really hard to kind of hear what I was saying as well. Uh, so safety first, we're going to go forward with the rest of these videos with the nice uh, helmet there in the uh, background. OK, so I'm not putting that on again. I apologize if anybody's upset by that, but uh, safety first. So let's uh, jump into uh, Lady of the Lake. Uh, so she is um, going to be a uh, part of the uh, Knights of Avalon uh, family. She is a nature sorcerer and her name is Sorcerers of Avalon. Uh, so that is fitting. I'm glad they did uh, decide to make her a sorcerer. Uh, her stats when fully ascended are going to be 756 attack, 741 defense, and 1312 health. Her special is called Magical Sword and she's running at slow mana speed. Uh, her special is recovering 42% for uh, of health for all allies. Uh, she's summoning a Magical Sword minion for the caster and nearby allies with 14% HP and 15% attack inherited from her. And then she is uh, giving the uh, minions a special ability of removing 10% of mana from the target that they hit uh, each time they uh, do their uh, automatic hit. Uh, so that's pretty cool as far as a constant tick down of mana from the enemy team. Uh, if you do want to fully ascend her to 370, uh, it is going to cost you one compass, one fine gloves, and one sturdy shield. And then if you want to take her all the way up to 480, uh, it's going to cost you one Damascus blade, one to Tome of Tactics, four more Sturdy Shields, and six Mysterious Tonic. And then, of course, uh, in addition to any food it's going to take to feed her up to this point, uh, to do the two ascensions, it's going to cost you an additional 1.15 million food. Uh, so as the Sorcerer, uh, she is going to require 1,500 Sorcerer Emblems to take her all the way up to level 20. Uh, if you do choose the Sword Path, it's going to give her attack uh, 853 uh, it'll raise her defense to 777 and it'll raise her health to 1531 uh, the shield path is going to raise her attack to 786 her defense to 889 and her health to 1423 uh, because the way this hero is built i'm definitely going to recommend taking the shield path on her uh, you want to increase her defense and her health as much as possible because you're more than likely going to be running her in a tank position and we'll talk about that in a second here uh, as far as her uh, ability as a sorcerer, it's going to be called Delay. And if you fully ascend her, it's going to give you up to 18% chance to drop mana generation by 50% for two turns after any normal damage. Uh, so this is a really great ability for her. It uh, definitely matches up with what she's doing as far as dropping mana with her uh, core special ability. Uh, so I really like uh, her as a sorcerer. And then again, uh, the best option is just follow the uh, shields uh, down the emblem path uh, and uh, just make her, you know, kind of as, as tanky or, or healthy as you can. Uh, with As far as the uh, troops, uh, definitely going to recommend that you're going to want to have the mana troops with her uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, but in her base form, as a uh, slow hero, she's going to take 12 nature tiles to charge her special completely. And then that would equate to uh, six ghosted tiles. Um, but as far as the... Um, uh, mana are the troops. Um, I'm gonna give her the same recommendation I did with Black Knight. Is you know look at the critical troops uh, until you get your mana troops up to level 17, uh, because at level 17 your mana troops are gonna take her from a slow hero to a normal hero. Uh, but while you're uh, fighting uh, with her until you get her fully ascended. Uh, or you get your uh, troops leveled up, I should say. Uh, the health and the uh, defense bonus that the critical troops are going to give you is probably actually going to help you out a little bit more along the way. And I'd say it's worth the sacrifice of the attack um, that you'd be losing. Uh, the critical uh, shot ability really isn't going to make or break uh, this hero either way. Uh, so, you know, proceed at, you know, which, which, uh, with whichever way is comfortable for you, but um, just uh, probably. Um, use the the critical troops if you if you do want to make her a little bit uh stronger as far as in the tank position uh for the knights of avalon family bonus uh with when you have two three four or five heroes of this class uh you're gonna or this family you're gonna be getting a critical chance of plus five ten 
15 or 20 percent and then you're also getting a healing bonus of plus four six nine or 13 percent so as far as a team build if you're trying to do a knights of avalon uh, family build with her i would say uh, run her as tank uh, she's a very uh, defensive hero and she's going to be healing uh, your team and also taking the mana down of the enemy team and then if you have black knight uh, or um, some other uh, taunt hero I would say you know just try and take uh, some of the damage away from her uh, just to keep her alive until she, her special starts going off because uh, she is going to be running it slow and then I would say you can put uh, Sir, Sir Lancelot as the second flank and then Morgan Le Fay uh, would make a great wing one and then you could put King Arthur as wing two uh, so this would give you a pretty decent uh, family team. Uh, you have uh, just enough defense to uh, be survive or, or survive um, some of the hits you're going to be taking, but then you have a nice amount of offense um, that you're firing back at the enemy team. Uh, as far as a rainbow defense uh, with with uh, Lady of the Lake as the tank, I would say again, if you have a taunt hero. Um, I'm going to put in Krampus uh, in this case because he's a nice hero. Uh, but if you're lucky enough to get him during this Christmas event that's currently active, uh, he would be a great hero to take off uh, or take the attacks away uh, and protect uh, Lady of the Lake uh, while she's trying to get her special charged up. And then I would put a Gravemaker or somebody uh, with multi-target damage on the second flank. And then you want some heavy snipers um, in the wings. I would say June costume would be a great wing one. And then if you're lucky enough to have Sesh Hat, you know, she'd be a, a nice uh, dark sniper uh, that you could put in wing two. Uh, so as far as uh, Lady of the Lake, if you are running her as a tank, uh, she's going to fall into what they call the healer tank meta. Um, the You might be accustomed to this. Uh, you know, two of the all-stars in this uh, healer tank meta would obviously be Talaria and Heimdall. Uh, which are uh, two of the top uh, tanks in the game. Uh, so there obviously is some value uh, to running a healer uh, as the tank if you have the right tank. Uh, the one thing you want to focus on is just making sure that the defense and the health are adequate. You don't want to put a healer tank out front uh, that's not able to withstand any hits uh, because that's just going to backfire on you. But as far as um, the healer tank meta, if you do want to explore it with some other heroes, uh, Kunshin is, is definitely an all-star uh, favorite as far as a dark uh, healer uh, that you can put out in front of tank. Uh, if you do have Bold Tusk, uh, he was one of the original healer tank meta. Um, he, uh, if, if you go with his base form, he's a fighter, so he can self-revive uh, or he has a chance to. And then he's providing a, uh, a nominal amount of healing uh, for all the allies. But then he's also increasing attack uh, for your whole team as well. And then uh, one of the other original healers, uh, as far as a tank, is Delilah. Uh, she is a really great uh, holy uh, tank. Uh, she's a fighter as well, so she can uh, has she has a chance to revive herself. And then not only is she providing healing uh, for your whole team, uh, but she's also uh, providing a nice uh, guardian um, minion that's going to go out in front, uh, that's going to absorb a lot of the attacks. So it's essentially putting another uh, shield um, of health on top of all your heroes because uh, they're going to absorb uh, some of that attack. And the fact that she's running at average mana speed uh, really does make Delilah, in my opinion, a, a very underrated hero. I'm surprised a lot more people don't talk about her. Um, but in the uh, Holy team, she's an excellent hero. Uh, so if you have her, you might want to explore uh, this healer tank meta. And then as far as the ice heroes, I would say uh, Aegir uh, is probably uh, the best example maybe that falls under the healer tank meta. Now, he's not doing any direct healing per se, uh, but he is, uh, as part of his special, he provides healing to uh, your team through any of the normal damage that they are applying. Uh, over three turns so I would say technically that is heals uh, so he falls in and then you know another hero I want to mention because the Christmas event is going on currently is Frosty uh, he's a three-star ice hero uh, so he's not you know in your four or five star uh, activities but as a three-star hero he is definitely in the healer tank meta as well uh, he's providing a nice uh, healing uh, for your entire team. And then he is also summoning a uh, elf minion uh, for each ally. So he's very similar to Delilah. Uh, he's just a very uh, overpowered um, three-star hero. Uh, so if you, he would be probably one of the easier ones to get uh, in the current Christmas uh, portal. Uh, so I would say, you know, don't, don't sleep on Frosty. He's a, he's a really cool ice hero in the three-star. Uh, so as far as Lady of the Lake and how to fight her, 
I would say charge up mana um, against her early. And what I mean by this is really um, at the beginning of the fight, don't respect her too much. You can fire a lot of tiles. Um, this is true of any healer um, that uh, you're is at the tank. Uh, you're not really concerned if, if you haven't really gotten your specials going as far as your attacks. If they, if they charge up and they fire off heals, uh, you know, unless they're putting a uh, significant buff of healing on top of the health of their team, uh, maybe like a, a Talaria or a Heimdall, um, you can really kind of uh, disrespect the uh, healers as a tank a little bit. Just use it to charge up your mana. And then um, the second thing I would recommend is when you get your specials charged up, again, you can uh, ignore uh, the healer uh, and try to now start taking out some of the damage healers on the other team. Uh, because if the, if the heroes aren't on the board, um, then it doesn't matter if uh, the healer uh, throws out some healing on that team. And then uh, the third thing, uh, specifically with Lady of the Lake, is although she's not providing any healing buff, uh, you do need to respect her minions. Uh, because over time, they can really uh, whittle in uh, to your mana uh, charges at, you know, minus 10% a pop. Uh, so that can really uh, hurt you if you're not careful with how you're charging up your specials and getting some of the attackers taken out early. Because uh, if you wait too long there and some of their uh, damage dealers start going off on you, uh, then you could be uh, in real trouble. So as far as the strategy is of which type of heroes to take in against her, obviously with her being nature, uh, you can go in with uh, fire heroes uh, just to play into her weakness. But, you know, again, as I mentioned with Black Knight, uh, you want to look at it in terms of if you are going against a rainbow defense that has her at tank, uh, consider using uh, your ice heroes uh, because the they probably are not going to have a nature attacker on the board that's going to be strong against your ice heroes. Uh, so, you know, kind of a reverse strategy and, you know, something that I always try and keep in mind as far as when I'm looking at uh, which team build I want to take in a raid or maybe in a war uh, when you're attacking. So um, the best position for Lady of the Lake, again, is going to be tank. I would say uh, she's going to be strong, our strongest against Ice Titans, uh, but she's still going to get a C. Uh, she is a good healer, uh, but I don't really like the mana uh, decrease as far as using that against a Titan. So she's not not going to be one of the better heroes uh, to take in against an Ice Titan. For War's defense and raid, um, if you you know in the right hands, she is really a great healer. Uh, so I would say uh, she's going to get an A um, on all three of those categories. And then when it comes to tournaments, I would say she's going to be really strong in rush and not so much in bloody or buff battle. Um, you know, so, you know, rush tourneys, um, as far as that specific type of tourney, I would say she gets an A as well. And then events, um, you know, she's going to be powerful. You know, she is a great healer. And on some of those events, as they get harder, uh, it will benefit you to have a hero that can take down some of that mana uh, off of those targets uh, just to keep them from firing a lot of heavy attacks into you. Uh, so overall, Lady of the Lake, a really cool hero. Uh, she is going to get an A overall. Uh, so as always, you know, if you like the content, you know, please remember to like and subscribe. Uh, I think we just passed the 500 subscriber mark, which honestly blows me away. Um, you know, we've only been doing these videos for a couple months, so I was, uh, I, I was excited to get to 100 subscribers. So the fact that we're over 500 you know that's that's just incredible and you know it's all thanks to you guys so thank you so much for the support um, i'll keep trying to make the videos better and better as we pump them out uh, but thanks for watching this one and we hope to see you on the next uh, video take care everybody